Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Games from Almost in Full Color. And today I wanted to talk to you about the Final Fantasy VII Remake that we just got last month and we've been waiting on since about 2015. Now, before I even start with the video, in case you missed the title, there's going to be spoilers in this. So if you haven't played the game and if you want to keep your playthrough innocent and untainted, then you probably shouldn't watch this video and you probably shouldn't watch many reviews about the game in general. Um, but with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the game. Now, playing through the story of the game, you can see that this one differs from the original in certain areas. And this one also seems like it's almost a replay of the timeline of the original. And by replay, I mean that Sephiroth has somehow found a way to go back to this timeline before things happened in the original and kind of replay them out again but have certain changes in order to obviously he wants to change the outcome of how the original went um and that's where we come in with the whispers the whispers seem to be more so the guardians of that timeline and they want to keep things exactly how they went in the original and they don't want any deviations that's going to create this alternate timeline if it happens uh my first hint that this was the case was when we first see Aerith. Uh, when she's standing there, you know, selling her flower and she offer you a flower. Uh, you notice that when the Shinra guards are coming up, Aerith was actually going to still be there. In the original, she is not there when the guards show up. But then the whispers come into play and they pretty much run her off. And I believe it's because Aerith knows Seth Sephiroth's plan. She can feel it because she's an ancient that something is going off with the timeline and it shouldn't be the way it is. And the whispers are trying to keep her from changing the timeline as well. Because you'll see later in the game that the whispers also go after Sephiroth. So anyone who's trying to mess with this timeline, the whispers attack almost trying to keep the purity of the timeline intact. So anytime that the game starts to deviate from the original, they introduce the whispers. Uh, it happens again when we're in Hojo's laboratory and Hojo is about to tell Cloud that he's actually not Soldier. Now, in the original game, you do find this out, but you find it out a lot later. Yet, when he's about to tell you, one, they don't even let you hear it. And two, as he's trying to say it, one, you can't hear it. And two, the whispers come out again and pretty much run him off because that would change the events of the original timeline. So if you're a fan of alternate timelines or you're a fan of stuff like that, then this might be great for you. Uh, as someone who didn't play the original a ton of times, only played it twice, I'm not really indebted to that story. and They don't have to stick right to it for me to enjoy the game. So I'm kind of really interested to see how this is going to play out. And it actually made me accept the concept of releasing the game in episodes a lot easier than if they were gonna stick straight to the original. Now, everyone knew that this game was gonna look great graphics-wise. And honestly, it did look really good. It looked the way a AAA title should, but I will say that I was kinda let down when it came to the graphics. Not because, like I said, the game didn't look good. It was because of how long we've waited for the game. Like, we've been waiting for this game a long time. I feel like the game should have really set a graphical standard for the PS4. Similar to how games like Last of Us set a new standard for graphics on the PS3, especially late in the PS3's life cycle to where we knew the PS4 was right around the corner, Last of Us really showed what the PS3 could do. I was expecting Final Fantasy VII Remake to do the same for the PS4 because they've taken so long to make this game, I really expected it to set the bar at a new level and it really missed that mark. So it was a good game, good graphics, but it just was on par with other games like Red Dead Redemption, God of War, things like that. So it didn't really set itself apart from any of those other AAA titles. And then there was also little hiccups during the game graphically, like uh, when you go to the place Cloud is staying, you'll notice that his door doesn't have any texture or detail on it. But yet when you look at the bathroom door, it has texture and detail. So did they just run out of time and forget to add texture to the door? Because it looks really bland and weird and it does stand out when you go in. Also, when you progress later in the game and you unlock fast travel via the chocobos, 
You'll notice that every time you use fast travel, when you get to the next area, it takes a few seconds for the detail and texture to load into the environment. It's almost like drawing, but not drawing off in the distance as you get up on it. But it's like, okay, give me like two to three seconds and boom, here's the graphics. And for a game that took this long to come out, I feel like that they should have been able to mitigate that to where it wasn't so apparent. But where they did set the bar as probably only Square Enix can is cutscenes. Some of the cutscenes in this game really made it feel like I was watching real people. That part, I was like, okay, that this looks amazing, but I can't give you high marks and graphics for cutscenes. It has to be in the gameplay and the gameplay is really where all the hiccups all the hiccups actually were so with graphics out the way now we can get to the gameplay of the game uh we'll first start off with talking about the battle system now the battle system was actually the shining star of this game if you ask me uh they took a lot of different concepts from other final fantasy 7 games uh, it feels weird saying of the past because this is supposed to be 7 remade so some of those games obviously came out after 7 but we're going to say this is the latest Final Fantasy because technically it is and all the other ones are past games but they take, they've take they taken a lot of the other battle systems and really molded it into like this perfect polished super fun battle system to play um, we brought back the stagger from Final Fantasy 13 uh, you have a lot of the free roam as they first kind of they first started on Final Fantasy 12, but I feel like they really perfected the free motion uh, movement, I guess, uh, of like Final Fantasy 15. Also, if anyone out there has played Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 7 Crisis Core on the PSP, there was a lot of free motion in that. Uh, but the only difference was in Final Fantasy 7 Crisis Core, you still kind of loaded into a battle. Everything wasn't just out in the open like Final, Final Fantasy 15 was. Um, so from those aspects, I was like, okay, they, they really did well with this by taking the best of everything and making one great thing. Uh, even upgrading the weapons. Uh, that felt a lot like the sphere grade system the the fear ah, the sphere grid system why can't i speak the sphere grid system from final fantasy 10. so they really pulled in a lot of different things to show you that i guess that they were paying homage to a lot of these games but they used everything they knew to make something even better now one part of the gameplay that like I kind of laughed at because I was wondering how it would be taken and it doesn't seem like it was taken negatively uh, was another thing that it actually had in common with other games of the past. Uh, one series of a Final Fantasy in the past to be specific was how linear the gameplay was in this first episode of the remake. Uh, I remember back when 13 came out, 13 was trash for being very linear. People expected it to be more of an open world environment. And although it did have certain areas of the game that was open world, the game itself, for the most part, was very linear. It was very stay on this path. It might be a couple branches, but most of the time those branches led to dead ends and it got you back to the main path. Final Fantasy VII Remake has the exact same layout. And I noticed that early on and I was like, wait a second. This is a super linear game, but no one is complaining about it. Nowhere is complaining about it nearly as much as they did with 13. Uh, so I don't know if it's because people love seven so much that it's hard for you to be negative towards it, even if it's doing something that you don't like. Uh, so I just found that funny. I actually didn't take anything away from the game for it. It didn't bother me at all, but I was just, I just thought it was funny that nobody else trashed this one for it as much as they did 13. So last but not least, I want to talk about replayability for this game. Uh, a lot of RPGs have replayability, whether you want to go back and maybe get weapons that you missed, or maybe get accessories, armor, uh, in this case, materia, any of those type of things. But this game actually has one extra thing, is that after you complete the game on normal, you unlock the hard mode. Hard mode, you have to do pretty much chapter selection, so you would load up your completed save file, 
uh, and then you will be able to select any chapter you want and then you can select hard for that chapter uh, if you want to play it straight through on hard then of course you would just load up the first chapter select hard and then it would just play through the game normally you won't have to keep selecting each chapter after that but the hard mode is definitely a challenge um, I'm playing through it currently right now and it definitely adds a whole new whole new feel to the game uh, from the aspect of not being able to use items at all at no point in the game can you use items so it's not just in battle they're locked items are locked period um, rest stops they don't give you magic points back uh, so you do get your health back if you choose to rest at one but you don't get any magic back and they've completely taken out the uh, the little vendors because uh, you, you can't use items, so there's no point of even buying them. Uh, but I thought that that was really crazy. Um, it's making me have to not only rely on my materia a lot more, but also you just can't burn magic up like crazy because you're so used to being able to just replenish it uh, in the normal mode. You get so many items and there's so many rest stations and stuff like that like you really could you don't have to worry about like being stingy with your stuff you get more than enough but in hard mode that's not the case and it also changes up uh certain boss patterns as well makes them a little more difficult and also if you're if you're think you're gonna come in like you did on normal they definitely switch it up for you so i thought that was really cool and that added a lot of real replayability for me um but outside of that that's pretty much all there is of course outside of getting more weapons armor materia uh things like that and also if you wanted to trophy hunt for 100 so with all things considered i guess that brings us to our conclusion and how i feel about the game as a whole or at least this whole episode um i really enjoy the game i think it's a really great game easily top five game uh i would not say it's the best game on the playstation 4 at this time but it's easily top five um i'm kind of wondering what they're going to do when the next episode will release since this one took five years i don't see us getting the next episode next year just because since they said it's a multi-part i guess episode release multi has never been used with two that i can remember in my life so that means we're at least getting three um so if they gave us say episode two holiday 2021 and then episode three holiday 2022 people are going to say well why didn't you just wait and give us the whole thing on the ps5 because most people would say they would have waited another two years if they could have got the entire game at one time so i feel like they might have backed themselves into a little corner with that and then if they say okay well the next episode comes out in three years People are going to be like, well, that's way too much time in between games because the next game obviously will not be viewed as a sequel. It's viewed as a, it's going to be viewed as another part of an already complete game. Uh, so I don't know how they're going to work that one out. Hopefully we just get them year after year and, you know, they'll just end up giving us, you know, on the second part, you're also going to get the first part for probably a little extra money. And then on that third final part, we'll get the whole complete bundle. Um, so hopefully uh, they just release it year after year and they don't make us wait too long. Now, for my reasoning that I think they're doing it in an episode fashion instead of just waiting and giving us the entire thing at once. I feel like deep down Square Enix never wanted to remake this game. I feel like that they knew that this probably would happen. New people would clamor for it, especially when they started doing HD remakes of other Final Fantasy uh, Final Fantasy titles. And I think that they really never wanted this, basically because of how the game was perceived, how the game was pretty much taken in as the greatest Final Fantasy game ever. It's the greatest Final Fantasy ever, and in a lot of people's eyes, it could be the greatest game ever. And that's a hard thing to live up to it's a hard thing to go back remake that game and have it be taken well but i feel like that the demand was so high for this game people clamored so much for this game year after year after year that square said okay fine like, we'll, we'll give you this game we'll do we'll give you the game like you want but we're going to get what we're going to get out of it so 
in order for us to make the most money possible we're going to charge you full price for parts of the game and yeah we'll 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 expand on each part and still give you your 30 to 50 hours worth of gameplay but we're going to turn this originally 60 dollar game into 180 to 240 dollar game and that's not even including any dlcs that's coming down the pipe which i'm pretty sure there's going to be dlc because you have the coliseum you have the shinra battle simulator and you also have the little vr battle simulation with the uh guy chadley i can't remember his name right now but you know who i'm talking about so that's a lot of areas for dlc which i'm pretty sure that they're going to capitalize on and shoot out dlc packs for anywhere between 10 to 20 dollars um so they're looking to really recoup a lot of money with this title and I feel like since demand was so high they feel like that they could get away with that and it does somewhat have a money grab feel to it but like I said since they are kind of changing the story I'm not as upset about it but I do wish they would have gave us the game in its entirety but with all that being said, I would still recommend this game to anyone who doesn't have it. I don't know anyone who doesn't have it at this point in time. You, Everyone probably already has this game. But if you were on the fence for some reason, it's definitely worth a purchase. Uh, maybe you just want to wait until they all come out so you can buy them all at once. That would be a good thing as well because you probably could get it for cheaper. I'm sure when the final edition comes out or the final episode, they'll have an all-in-one bundle that's probably would end up saving you say if it all it was four parts and it was 240 dollars for everything if you bought them in parts you probably could get the whole thing for probably around like 160 bucks or something like that so if you wanted to go that route that would be easy you know that would be a good choice too but i would definitely recommend you just go ahead bite the bullet get each episode and so you can enjoy this because i really feel like this is going to be a good one um so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I actually am planning on doing a video with Keith because Keith has already given his re his review for this game. Uh, he's a super Final Fantasy VII guy. He knows a lot more about the original than me because he played it so many more times. So I want to do a video with him where me and him sit down and talk about how we feel about the story, the deviations from the original and things like that. So I feel like that would add a lot to it and maybe some theories on where we think they might be taking this game or what's actually going on in the story uh so with that being said i hope you liked the video if you did please hit the like button uh if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you like the content you're seeing then also subscribe uh we also we all put out different material me myself me myself ha me roger terry and keith uh so if you like the type of stuff and the content we put out then please subscribe uh but that being said that's gonna be the end of this one and catch you guys next time i'm out <laughs>